Pinocytosis and phagocytosis. Endocytosis is when the cell takes in material through a through. Uh, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, we'll go back up. So exocytosis, when a vesicle encloses material and it fuses with the outer membrane and releases it, that's exocytosis. Endocytosis is when the material is accumulated in a vesicle and it's moved into the cell. And uh, pinocytosis is just like a... When, it, when the cell moves water into the... When the cell drinks, when it moves water from the outside... Okay, that was confusing. Thank Claire, you. Keep asking if you have more questions. That, that was all. Okay, you good? Yes, thank you. Okay, to review this, sodium is the predominant charged positive ion outside the cell along with chloride. Potassium is on the inside. So that makes the outside positive compared to the voltage inside. Sodium chloride on the outside of the cell, potassium and proteins on the inside of the cell. Calcium can also be extracellular. So here's the relative concentration of sodium on the outside of the cell versus potassium on the inside of the cell. If you if you have a voltmeter, if you have a voltmeter, you can measure the inside of the cell is has an a voltage or a potential of minus 70 compared to the outside. You have to have a ground electrode and an insertion electrode or a recording electrode. And you can record that the inside of the cell is negative with respect to the outside of the cell. Okay. Since there's more sodium outside the cell, that'll cause diffusion of sodium from a high concentration to a low concentration. The electrical gradient is caused the fact that the inside of the cell is negative with respect to the outside. So sodium moves into the cell because it's a high concentration on the outside, and it's attracted by the negative charge or voltage inside the cell. And so, and these sodium and potassium are gonna move through special protein channels or pipelines. Concentration in electrical, it's called the electrochemical gradient. Gradient because there's a difference in concentration from outside to inside, and a difference in charge from uh, inside to outside. Okay. Now here's an artificial cell. It's not permeable to any of these ions, so it's gonna be electrically neutral. There's a leak channel, it's open all the time. Potassium is always diffusing out of the cell through a, a leak channel. This particular cell, here's the positive charge on the outside compared to the negative charge on the inside. This is the voltage, membrane voltage, if you see an E, and the voltage, because Potassium is leaking out, 
is minus 90 millivolts. The inside is minus with respect to the outside. If you have uh, membrane channels, the ions are going to diffuse based upon their concentration and electrical gradient, and that creates an equilibrium potential or an equilibrium voltage. We're not going to talk about this. Okay. If a cell is only permeable to sodium, you will have uh, plus 60 millivolts. So what the membrane potential does, the cell is allows sodium to go in and potassium to go out and the balance of these two charges. Wait, we got minus 90. And plus 60 ends up being about minus 70. So most of the food you eat allows for cells to maintain this high concentration of sodium on the outside and this high concentration of potassium on the inside. So a, hot, a net diffusion of potassium is out when the channels are open. Uh, sodium has a high concentration and it moves toward the negative inside. The balance of these charges creates a voltage in the cell so that the inside is negative compared to the outside. We don't need this one. Okay. They don't reach equilibrium because uh, there's a sodium or potassium leak channel. Okay, so let's go through these steps. In order to get sodium pumped out, you have to have energy from ATP. With that energy, the sodium is pumped out. More energy is required to pump potassium back into the cell. So, they don't reach equilibrium because of this pump and how it pumps three sodium out and two potassium in. And the, the, the flow of potassium is higher because it goes through uh, a pipeline or a channel and it's a greater potassium moving out and sodium moving in but the cell is constantly pumping sodium uh, out of the cell. And when they flow, you get a net movement of potassium out and a net movement of sodium in when the cell opens channels. So this pumping of sodium out, notice these three sodiums here, are pumped out with energy and the potassium is pumped in with energy. It doesn't reach equilibrium because of the sodium potassium pump. It's important for the cell to be able to do work by using charge. So the membrane potential is created by the sodium potassium pump and the diffusion of potassium in and out. But the bottom line is that this sodium potassium pump 
is going to keep high sodium on the outside and high potassium on the inside. So the inside of the cell is minus 70 compared to the outside. Okay, that's it. Okay, so let's... Get rid of that. And uh, where are we? Okay, I'm gonna stop. Stop the recording. So we'll have a separate recording. <clears throat>